public resources, even church resources, dampen the lives of those who depend on them. We must all strive to get rid of these things and strive to be identified with God. That's what Nehemiah strived to do, to bring dignity to a people who have lost dignity by reconnecting them with the Spirit of God. This is what St. Peter is reminding us. When we are reconnected with the Spirit of God, now you have a new identity. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that we may continue to proclaim the mighty acts of God who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we all strive to get into this marvelous light, then the rest will be history. We shall be a better people. We shall be a nation that fear God. We shall be a nation that strive and grow together. We shall be a country that will be respected locally and beyond. And verse 10, once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to be. Church, community, leadership, nation, county, locality. If we all strive to know this God, our identity shifts ground. Once we were not a people, now we become a dignified people. That's what we want to do to the border border sector. They have not been considered as a people, but when they come and reconnect their spirit with the spirit of God, they earn their respect. Their self-esteem will rise, and not only the border border, but other sectors of society. Yes, as I was sharing last night, in Adina we had my own personal story. I lost my family inheritance in 1971. When uh, my father died in 69, my mother and my three sisters were sent away by my stepbrothers. We lost everything. But Christian, uh, a Christian organization by the name World Vision came to our village in 1975 when I was in class three, looking for children to be sponsored. And I became one of those sponsored children. So out of that, now we have the Archbishop of the Anglican Church. Amen. I participated in launching a book of a gentleman by the name Dr. Macmillan Kiru, who was the director of World Vision that time. And he invited me without knowing I was one of those children, and I did not also know until I read his profile, and he invited me to launch that book as his Archbishop. And this is what I told him in that congregation. Dr. Macmillan, in 1975, our path crossed each other. You didn't know me, I didn't know you, but I was very present in your table as a number of the many children you are counting as numbers of sponsored children from Narok and other parts of the country. And today, behind every number is a soul. And the soul behind the numbers you are counting in 1975 is now the Archbishop standing before you. He cried. What am I saying? Touching the lives of the invisible, those who have nobody to care, is a great blessing. And there are many in this country who nobody knows them. When the church and the community and the leadership, both at national and county level, put programs that touch their lives, they will not remain as numbers. Because they are not numbers, they are souls. Precious before God. God has favored us as people who once were not a people, but now we are God's own people. People who did not receive mercy, but now we have received mercy. May God enrich our lives and reconnect us to his spirit. For when we are connected to the spirit of God, everything else changes. I end by narrating a very short story of a man who discovered the Americas. His name is Columbus, we all know the story. Columbus one day wanted to explore the West. And he went to the Queen of Spain because Spain and Portugal were leading in the voyages that have conquered the sea and they were leading exploration across uh, the expanse of the seas of the world. So he said to the Queen, I want to go West this time round. 
and the queen said, I don't want you to lose my fleet. That time the world was thought to be flat. And they thought there was an end to the world. Like the end of this table, then you fall and fall to, you know, uh, uh, to, to space. So when this guy sailed, and he was told to read the map carefully, the next signal he sent is we are approaching the end of the world. And the queen said, please turn, bring my ships and my men back safely. And the man went on sailing. The next communication he sent was we are well beyond the map. We have sailed beyond the current known map. We have an opportunity to redraw the map and be the first nation to redraw the map. And uh, he was told to return and he said, I cannot turn until I see the end. And the end they saw was the expand continent of America and he discovered because he was willing to go beyond the map. How far are we willing to go in our faith journey, in our development agenda, in our families, in our communities? Let us all strive to sail beyond the map. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.